essays, resumes, boxes, oh my, they all make up your MBA application. And ultimately, your application will be evaluated as one presentation of you. It represents you. Should you approach the application process like a productivity challenge, a jigsaw puzzle, or a to-do list? Listen in and find out. Welcome to Admission Straight Talk, the podcast dedicated to graduate admissions and helping you approach the application process thoughtfully and successfully. Your host is Accepted's founder and world-renowned admissions guru, Linda Abraham. At Accepted, our mission is to get you to that unforgettable moment when you read your acceptance email and shout, yes, I'm in, confident you'll be attending the perfect program to help you launch the career of your dream. Welcome to the 487th episode of Mission Straight Talk. Thanks for joining me. Today is going to be a solo show where I answer the questions posed in the introduction while also providing a lot of information on how to approach your MBA application. If you're not applying for an MBA, there's still going to be a lot for you to learn from this episode and specifically from its focus on a strategic approach to the application process and on using every element of the application to your advantage, not to mention thinking about where you want to end up after you get the degree. For you MBAs, when you finish listening to this episode, you're invited to take the free six-question quiz at accepted.com slash MBA and see how well you've absorbed the lessons in this show. You'll also gain access to relevant other resources, both free and paid, that you can use as you attempt to incorporate the advice contained in this podcast to your strategy and your successful MBA application effort. I realize it is an enormous effort to apply successfully to an MBA program, especially if you're applying to top MBA programs, programs with acceptance rates of 6%, 10%, 20%. That means they reject the overwhelming majority of applicants who submit applications. Indeed, the elite programs reject many, if not most, admissible candidates. So you have a challenge, even if you have good stats, and that challenge is even greater if you don't. Actually, it's really a few challenges. How can you make your application as impressive as possible? That's the fundamental challenge. How are you going to tell your story and effectively present the non-statistical elements of your application, specifically the essays and when necessary, a video? And since most of you are also working full-time and have other responsibilities in addition to work, how can you make the process efficient? Those are the questions I'm going to address. Listen in. There's a lot to cover here. Okay, step one, the foundation of any effective application process is choosing the right schools to apply to. In order to determine what those schools are, you must have, first, professional direction, defined for MBAs as having a preferred industry in which you want to work and a function you would like to perform. Note, this is not what you necessarily want to study. It's different. The basic question is, where do you want to end up? What's your goal for the MBA? Because that goal, that direction, becomes your North Star in the application process and indeed in, even when you arrive on campus. You also need, in order to choose the appropriate schools, competitive academic qualifications. You're going to have to show through your application that you can handle both the communications and quantitative demands of a top MBA program. Now, these qualifications are usually revealed via your transcript and your test score, but they can also be revealed via certifications and work experience, and not in terms of the communications element, also your application itself, your writing, and then in your interview, your verbal communication skills. And the third thing you're going to need is a sense of what's important to you in an MBA program. It might be location. Now, location can also be a part of your professional direction. For example, you may want to work in the city of London, or you might want to work on Wall Street, or you might want to work in Silicon Valley. Those are more professional, goal-oriented location questions. What I'm talking now about is just personal preference. Do you prefer being on a, in a small city or a big city? Do you prefer warm climate, cold climate? Do you have a significant other whose work and preferences have to be taken care of? Do you prefer to be close to your family or far from your family? And then there's instructional focus and curriculum case versus experiential learning versus a combination of case experience and lecture. What do you prefer? You're going to want to apply to programs that support your goals and meet your needs and where you're competitive based on a realistic evaluation of your qualifications and what schools are looking for. So one to two aspirational schools is fine. 
But unless you are very open to the possibility of rejection and reapplication, most of the programs that you apply to should be those where you are competitive. Unless you're limited geographically, I recommend applying to four to six schools, fewer if you're highly competitive and limited geographically, more schools if you are aiming high or have some serious blemishes in your record. So applying to appropriate schools is step number one to applying effectively. Again, you start with your goal, start with your assessment of your qualifications, and then you choose the, the right schools. How do you know what are the right schools? Well, you need to research them. Start with the obvious, start with the websites of the schools, and that should help you narrow down your list to, I don't know, 10, 12 schools that you're considering. And then attend events for the schools that you're most interested in. You need to learn about the programs beyond the website to confirm your initial inclination to apply to certain schools and also to apply effectively. So if you want to learn about the schools more, more in depth than just the information provided on the website, attend the admissions committee events, either live events or recorded events, because those events will provide you with insight and help you confirm your decision to apply to certain schools, or perhaps help you decide not to apply to certain schools, and ultimately help you gain acceptance because you'll be more informed and better informed, and maybe even help you decide where to apply in the event of multiple acceptances. Attending those events and getting that information, whether again, they're recorded or, or live, will also help you respond to essay questions, short answer questions, and hopefully interview questions. And finally, attending those events is a form of demonstrating interest in specific schools. And some schools definitely weigh the amount of demonstrated interest they see from you, whether it's attending events in your, in your city, possibly visiting the school, which is less and less common due to COVID, or you know, participating in online events. Those are all really, really important. Also follow on social media. Doing all this is really important because the schools provide lots of information about their programs, as well as advice on completing the applications. Take advantage of what they provide to ensure that you were making a wise investment in your MBA application, and also to improve your chances of acceptance because you have that information. Now that you've done this research, what criteria should you use to decide where you should apply? There are four criteria I think that you should use, and here they are. One, you want to look at the school's success in placing grads in the positions and companies you'd like to work for. Look at their employment reports. Again, talk to recent grads that are in the fields you'd like to go into. Two, look at the curriculum. What and how you are going to study. Is it what you want to study? Is it presented in a way that you'd like to learn? And that would begin, you know, case, project, experiential, lecture, whatever. Are they providing you what you want to, to learn in a way you want to learn it? Three, extracurricular opportunities. That would be clubs, treks, competitions. Do they support your goals and match your interests? It doesn't have to be all work when you're in business school. Is there a, a group that matches your specific ethnicity, perhaps your religious beliefs? Maybe you have certain sports interests. Again, look for activities that support your goals and also where you share interests. And finally, Again, I'm going to go back to it, your qualifications and competitiveness. These four points are fairly easy for me to list, and actually I'm going to go over them one more time. A, school success and placing grads and positions and companies you'd like to work. B, the curriculum, what you're going to learn and how you're going to learn it. C, the extracurricular opportunities, clubs, treks, competitions, etc. And four, your qualifications and competitiveness. I'm going to share in the show notes two free downloads and accepted service that can assist you in choosing the right school to apply to. Again, it's easy for me to rattle off those four criteria. It might not be so easy to implement them. So check out these resources at accept.com slash 487. The first two are free and they are Best MBA Programs, A Guide to Choosing the Right One. It's a free guide that you can just simply download. And then the second one is Seven Steps to MBA Acceptance. And that's a free webinar, recorded webinar. You can watch it at your leisure, listen to it while jogging, whatever you want. And the third one is Acceptance Individual Advising with an experienced MBA admissions experts that you can apply to the best program for you. The charge is $360 per hour. There's a one hour minimum. Usually one hour is enough. Sometimes it's two hours, but realize that in terms of the time you're going to invest in your applications and the application fees, the time you spend ensuring that you're applying to the right programs for you can be well worth the investment. Now, once you know where you want to apply, what's the next step? How should you approach the actual application? Well, you need to think about what you want the schools to know about you, first of all, based on the questions in the application and the different opportunities 
available for you to present yourself, as well as the values of the schools, the mission of the schools that you are applying to. Note that I did not say, ask your friends what's cool in MBA admissions and make sure you present it. Present yourself so that your application matches what you think the admissions committee wants to read, but has little similarity to what to the person you see in the mirror. Dive into the writing process, emphasizing the one achievement that you're most proud of throughout your application so that your personal brand is clearly associated with that accomplishment. These are all approaches that we have heard from clients who purchased our rejection review service. <laughs> I've also heard them occasionally from admissions committee members when I've asked what mistake do you commonly see applicants making in their application? These are the answers I get, especially telling us what you think we want to hear, which is not usually what they want to hear. They want to hear who you are. They want to hear from you. These approaches do not work. Don't take them. Schools want to meet you via your application. They don't want to meet somebody else. They don't want to meet some imaginary version of you. And you, as an applicant, want to present your best self. But you have to make sure that the person in the application resembles the person that you see in the mirror. You want to come across as a genuine, thoughtful, multidimensional human being who can add diversity of interest, thought, background, and experience to your class and to the school's community. You want to show that you belong in that school's community and that you share its values. You just haven't started paying tuition yet. So take the time to approach each application thoughtfully and purposefully and authentically. So what is the best way to go about that advice? If that's the goal, great. But what's an approach that will help you present that multidimensional human being effectively and efficiently? I'm aware that you are working full time and without compromising quality. Well, here are three options. And you can think about it, and I'll tell you which one I prefer. Approach number one, approach the application, the applications, as a series of discrete tasks that you simply need to check off and complete. It's kind of like a to-do list. Get it done. Approach number two, create a spreadsheet for all the written or visual portions of the applications. Have a worksheet for each school so that each application is viewed separately and as a whole. And then have a row for each element in the application. Plan ahead and think about each row, how you're going to use each element to best effect. You want to minimize duplication and make sure that every element is additive. So plan out how each element will add to the reader's knowledge of you by inserting different experiences, different perspectives in, in the different boxes. And then when you approach the writing process, you will know that you are presenting a comprehensive multidimensional presentation of you. The third approach, let's say you're applying to five schools, batch all leadership questions, all diversity questions, all challenge overcome questions, write them at one time, it'll save you time. Then write the essays that are school specific, uh, respond to short answer questions and draft activity and work descriptions. Batching essentially is what I'm pre presenting here. It acts like a productivity enhancement tool and it maximizes efficiency and time usage. So which do you think is right? One, two, or three? Pretend there's music in the background. Okay, I would go with two. Uh, option B. Application real estate is valuable and every question is there for a reason. You want to minimize duplication, as I said a minute ago, and have every element of your application add value, add texture, add color, just like a puzzle piece in a jigsaw puzzle. A is efficient. You, you know, you just check it off, but it doesn't allow for that step back and looking at each application as a whole and making sure that all elements are additive. And three for sure doesn't do that. So approach your application process thoughtfully, purposefully, and again, each application is one whole where every element is supposed to add to the reader's knowledge of you, like pieces of a jigsaw puzzle. Now you can start your writing process. You'll have strategized how you want to use each element in the application to create a wonderful portrait of you. Then start writing the essays, the short answer questions, and when relevant, video scripts if you have to, to do a video. If you'd like help strategizing and then editing your essays, check out Accepted's most popular services for MBA applicants. And those are our application packages and our hourly editing services. Again, I will link to those from the show notes. You can access the application packages at accepted.com slash MBA package, or go to the show notes at accepted.com slash 487. You'll find the links. So 
you've written your essays and you think your applications are ready for prime time, you're ready to hit submit, but shouldn't you check everything? And if so, what is the best way to do so? What is the best way to check them? Is spell check sufficient? Here are my recommendations for a comprehensive check of your application before submitting it. And I, I would do it not just once, I do it in four steps. And I also would suggest that you don't do it at the last minute, like, you know, an hour before the, the, the deadline ends, okay? Or the hour before the deadline. Give yourself a few days, okay? So step one, review the application as a whole to ensure that all elements are adding to the reader's knowledge of you, minimize duplication, and show fit with the school you are applying to. That's number one. That's level number one. Wait a day if possible. If not, because I'm a realist, how about an hour, 10 minutes, a walk around the block, then move to step two. Step two, critique each essay or, or written piece to ensure that it is a coherent piece of writing that answers the question posed, reveals something distinctive and interesting about you. Then wait a day or at least an hour or that walk around the block and line edit each essay to correct for spelling, grammar, wording, and syntactical errors. And then review the rest of the application, the boxes, to ensure that there are no factual or spelling errors in them. Now, when I'm talking about spelling errors, that's pretty obvious, but factual errors are important too. You don't want to exaggerate your salary. You don't want to omit, either through omission or commission, uh, times of unemployment, uh, gaps on, on your resume or in a transcript. Own up to them. Be factual. It can be far worse to omit something that's negative, far, far worse than to include it and address and address it. We, every few years, have a client who didn't follow that, uh, that rule, and they are frequently accepted and then rejected. If they had told us what they were doing, we would have told them, be factual. So that's what I'm going to tell you now. Please, please, please don't omit negative information that is requested. You don't have to volunteer it if it's not requested, but if it's requested, provide it. And obviously correct any errors, genuine errors. If you want to submit a polished application, take the time to review it on both a macro level and a micro level. And that's exactly what I'm suggesting with the review steps I, I provided. And again, don't review it at the last minute in a rush. Just set your deadline three days ahead of time before the, the application is really due. And then you'll have to time to review it as I suggested. And if you don't, if something comes up, you'll have at least three days or whatever to make sure you still get it in. Now, I've dumped a ton of information on you in this episode, and I probably could have gone into more depth on almost any of the individual points I was making. Right now, I invite you to take our new quiz, exhibit.com slash map MBA. It's free, and it will give you a chance to see how well you understood the material presented in this episode. Plus, it also links to the additional resources I mentioned and additional resources beyond what I mentioned, both free and paid. Those resources can also be found in the show notes for today's episode at accepted.com slash 487. Again, that's accepted.com slash 487. Listener, I want to thank you for joining me for our 487th episode. If you found the show worthwhile and have friends approaching the MBA application with trepidation or at least concern about managing the process, please feel free to tell them about this show or leave a review on iTunes. Again, the link to the show, which you can share with your friends is accepted.com slash 487. And we link from there to iTunes, which makes it easy to subscribe for you and your friends. This is the Mission Straight Talk produced by Accepted, and I am your host, Linda Abraham. I'll talk to you again next week. <music>